Okay, your first storage compartment over here is just going to have some chassis keys that's located up here in the back side. And then you have your converter slash automatic inverter located in the storage compartment here too. And you have a breaker forward over here on this side. And that's all that's in this storage compartment here. Okay. Hydraulic pump is located in the next one down. This is going to be used for your big slide and your leveling system here too. And that's all you're going to do in here. Your manual overrides in case your slide does fail on you is going to be these guys right here. You're going to pull down on them. It'll take the pressure off of the jacks and it'll work them up individually. And then you have two of them, one under here and one over here. One of the two will work with the, over, the large slide in the event of a failure because it's hydraulic. And then of course you can push behind it. I don't recommend trying it, but that's what that is. So it's like a hydraulic ram that pushes it out. So when mm -hmm. you let it off, it's just going. Yep. Okay. Those things will take the pressure off the line so you can push it back. And as you have, you know, the Buffalo Bills to helping you push this thing in here, because that's how many people you're going to need, um, it'll push the fluid back in there. Right. We just need Bobby. That's it. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Yep. And we had storage compartment number one. Storage compartment number two. Yep, they are passed through at the top uh, because the axle and everything has to go through there. But um, yeah, and every storage compartment has its own individual light switch in it too. So all of your lights are controlled individually in the basement compartment. Your water compartment's down in here. So stuff that you guys actually have in here. First up, light switch water pump switch. Down here you have your city water slash tank fill valve selector. So when you're hooked up to your city water connection here, you can fill your onboard water tank from over here. So if you guys are at the campground, get ready to leave, go to your next destination, you can fill up with water here. But you have to have this back on city water to use the water in the tank or at the campground. Tank fill is just for filling the tank. Okay, so you really don't need to pour the water it's on the other side. Yeah. You can fill it either way. Okay. Okay. Um, your low point drains are right down over here, just for winterizing purposes. Um, outside shower, perfect for starting your day off right. Showering outside, scaring the neighbors, living life on the edge. I don't like your style, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, comes in handy if you make a mess up in the tanks here and everything, so um, that's actually pretty good there. Your sewer valve uh, connection is right down here, and you have your gray handle, and then you have your black handle here as well. Okay, handles are color coded, and then your sewer connection does swivel down in here as well. Um, you have a water filter wrench for your water filter housing right here. Just use the wrench to take it off. Do not use it to put it on. It's plastic. You can over tighten and crack it, and that's not a good thing there. This hose Tiffin gives you for winterizing. It gets used on the other side. You hook this up on the water pump and then suck it out of the jug right there. So we'll actually play what, or show you where that goes on the other side. City water connection, black tank flushing system. Do you guys have one? Yeah. Okay. Same thing, just remember black valve's got to be open when you do using it. Cable, tripod, portable satellite dish. Um, those are your ends if you want to use those services. You can, those are your ends right there. Then your hot water tank bypass is here, um, bypass normal flow. Winterizing this thing is very, very easy to do. Any questions? Okay. The, winter, the winterizing question will be when we get inside. I don't know how you winterize that ice cream. Okay. <laughs> All right. Coming in 7,000 quiet gasoline engine. Um, produces about 70 watts of power to run everything in here for you guys. Service information on this can be found right here. Oil gets changed every 150 hours or annually, whichever comes first. Air filter gets cleaned every 150 hours, replaced at 450 hours. And you do have two 30 amp breakers there. Try to remember you have breakers on this generator. Once in a while they can trip, giving you power issues inside the unit. It's not as likely as it's going to happen here, but it can. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
you make a really good product. And that's the correct install method. Okay. Down in here you have your 50 amp power supply cord, your automatic transfer switch, and your built-in surge guard. And this one only covers you on the higher end of voltage surges, so if too much power goes through here, it can actually trip, giving, um, so that way you don't have anything get damaged or whatnot electronic-wise. does not cover you against too little voltage going to the unit, though. So if voltage drops below like 103 volts, um, you can actually damage the electronics in here, and these things have a lot of electronics in their control systems. So a lot of customers go with the external surge guards or adding another one in for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and yes, a power wheel will fit under for you down the road. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead and wax. Dryer vents, washer dryer combo, that's pretty much it there. Storage in here in this basement compartment. Generator exhaust is back here though. Hot water tank. This one's a suburban 10 gallon hot water tank. Um, you have the anode rod in here. Uh, did you guys have the anode rod before? Um, that yeah. long rod that crumbles mm -hmm. away yeah. dissolves in the water. Okay. You still got the on-off switch here. All right. This is for your electric side. This enables the electric side, and then the on-off switch itself is actually inside the unit. You gotta have two switches on total to complete the circuit. Suburban puts that in there as like a safety check. And your push to reset button there. In the event of an internal failure on the hot water tank and the water does not shut off and it reaches 130 degrees. It will go, the tank will continue to heat until it reaches 180 degrees, and that's where these backup fail safes kick in. And they will trip, and then you gotta push it back in to reset it. Um, so now we have to turn this one on and one inside out too. Yes, to use electric. Um, so this one, because you have two of them, this is electric, and that's propane. I remember that this is electric because the switch for electricity is over here. And then your propane side is over here. That helped me remember it, so. Right, it'll work simultaneously. You right? can. The jury's out. Yeah, if you wanted to heat it up a little quicker, it's possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is possible. Depending on who you talk to, um, the jury's like I said, the jury's kind of out on that one there. So, uh, some people say the two systems shouldn't interfere with one another. You're fine to do that. Other people tell you, well, electricity can interfere with propane, causing a problem, but. Realistically, your in your electric element is inside the tank. Your propane is, is there, so I think you guys would be fine. Mm -hmm. So that's actually nice and convenient. Ladder supposed to weight an adult one press at a time on the ladder. It will support your weight. I have gone up with body shop guys before. There was five of us up there hanging a body panel on this thing. Not this exact one, but. Um, except for that one, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, no, it will support your weight. It's walkable, it's service walkable. You want to wash the roof a couple times a year. Check the caulking around the vents, the air conditioner. They do crack and move the exposure. So patch them in with a self level and caulk just like you used to do on the Alpine that you guys had too. Um, or Avalanche. I always forget the name. Alpine. Sure. Awesome. Okay. Um, because it's a one piece fiberglass roof, it's going to be very slippery and wet. So be careful walking around up there. Alright. Mm -hmm. And ladder of sports about 300 pound weight capacity on the ladder. Backup cameras up there in the center. And that's it. Alright. Basement compartment here. That's pretty much it. And lights. It just fell off. Mm -hmm. Just pop it back on. It's not broken. Okay. Go. All right. Over here, another basement compartment. Mm -hmm. Carol's secret stash. <laughs> That's shower access actually uh, for the plumbing in case anybody needs to service the back of the shower. 
um, that's where you're going to go into it, um, instead of ripping out the wall to actually do it. So that's just that. We parked next to the New York X, that's why it's locked. Yep. <laughs> the connection is just from down here. <laughs> yep. Propane tank right down in here. Uh, this one, 24.2 gallon capacity. Uh, it is full, and these things, uh, you'll see people maybe once a year, twice a year, depends on how much you use it, but we get some customers that come through once a year in the beginning of the season or end of the season to refill it um, or get it ready for the season on that side. So, it lasts you quite a while. Okay. Good. And of course, you can store stuff on top. Right. The gauge on the tank itself is very deceiving. Um, once you start filling and uh, draining it and refilling it, it can throw that gauge off, even if you're doing it correctly. So go by what it says inside the unit. Okay? Which I'll show you that too. Portable water fill, um, it's your gravity fill. So if you want to fill it, you can do so from over here, just like you used to on the fifth one. And your onboard water tank itself is right here. So what you're going to do for that winterizing hose is you're going to follow this line up and you're going to connect right here to that with that hose that was in the water compartment. And then you can stick that in the jug of antifreeze, turn your water pump on and it'll suck everything through and winterize the unit. Okay? Go ahead. Okay, now. Um, yeah. Um, that's why they actually leave that open because it just drips right out. Um, and then when you dewinterize it, they, the guys here will they'll, they'll sanitize it and everything. Um, if you do it, we have the sanitizer in the store that you can get and run through it as well. Mm -hmm. But it's nice having the tank over here because you can actually see how much water you have. Right. Right. Any questions? Nope. And then of course, drain forward is right down there too. storage and here is your central vacuum system. All of your hoses and attachments are found right in here. Okay? And up in here you have your fine. Door that falls off and there's your first bag. Um, okay. There is a little plaque behind here too that's got the model number, bag number um, for getting uh, replacement bags. Which we can get here too. But all your hoses and attachments are all found in here. Okay. Uh, you only have one furnace in this unit, which is located right here. Um, does get very hot. Don't touch it. Common sense. I know, but I'm still supposed to tell everybody that hot things will get hot because it's not common in everybody. And just to remind you, we do have those mud dauber screens in the store, stainless steel mesh screens that cover these openings, prevent things from getting in there, making a nasty clogging up your appliances. Um, they sell for about 20 bucks for the furnace. Your hot water tank is $27.99. Um, that'd be the only two that you need. Um, a labor bill to take it apart and clean out because a spider, a beam, mud dauber, wasp, whatever it may be, made a mess. And there's about 250 bucks, possibly more, if damage was caused. Right. Um, so a $20 screen is not a bad investment option okay. there. Okay? Yeah. Other side of your storage up in the front. Outside television comes with remotes, which are inside. Oh. Um, they use a joystick toggle switch on the bottom of these TVs now. Um, so if you wanted to do that without the t remote, I mean you could do that here, push it down the center, and you can bring up your input list, your satellite, your Blu-ray, and that's it there. We'll turn that off because. I'm going to place it more inside. And in here, hey, my clipboard's back. <laughs> your extra chairs, your extra floor tiles, and your 12 volt outlet and your 110 outlet for plug of stuff in outside is right in there, too. Any questions on that? Okay. <clears throat> Up here in the front, engine stuff. We have the Ford V10 engine in the front here, so that means your battery is going to be located right down here. Your antifreeze is going to be right up there, okay? 
Next to that, you're going to find your oil dip, uh, fill and your transmission dipstick. In the center, you're going to have your air filter all right, for the engine. Over here on this side, you will actually have the oil dipstick itself. Your power steering fluid is the black canister there. Up in here, you have your brake fluid. And most importantly, down here, you have your windshield washer fluid. Okay. Uh, before we go inside and open it up, we're going to go over these switches down here by the door. I'm currently sitting on your house batteries, which are located underneath here. Because of the residential fridge, I believe you guys are going to have extra batteries. Um, we'll open it up and double check in a second. And we're going to do your awning next. So, awning controls right over here on the side. Okay. Extend, reach back. It's really easy to do. The door doesn't have to be open or closed. power awning it is adjusted or pitchable for the rain um, to do that what you're gonna do is, is get a step stool I'm sorry oh, you're not <laughs> you're tight with this guy up here <laughs> and then now one side is pitched so the water's gonna run off this side over here and then the best place to have these is so that way it's slightly loose um, and if I go any more it's gonna start to tighten it if it's too loose, this knob falls out of a square piece is threaded into. It happened to me once, it took me 10 minutes to thread in a simple screw. Because trying to get it in there is just not easy. Um, it's constantly shifting around, you can't get your finger there to hold it down. Pain in the butt. Okay? Then, uh, that's pretty much it for that, but... Your porch light also has an LED awning light tied into it that runs the entire length of the motorhome. Um, they're the same thing, you can't choose one or the other, you gotta have them both on to have it on there. But it's all LED so it shouldn't be attracting bugs or anything underneath it, which is nice. Okay. That's your porch light switch, your entry light switch, you have your entrance step on and off right here, your 12 volt disconnect, your master, um, this is actually how you're going to control your inverter. Okay. Um, you're going to shut this off for storage if you're not leaving it plugged in. Okay, if you are going to leave it plugged in, you're fine, you can leave your batteries on. But if you're not, this being on will activate your inverter once you have no power going into the unit and that will drain the batteries. Okay, so make sure you shut this off. Of course, your floor lights are just this little light here. You only have one, your main ceiling lights. And then you have a master light switch here. Now the 12 volt disconnect used to be also a master light switch. You guys are camping with the grandkids at Disney, for example. You're running late trying to catch the ferry because if you do not make it to this particular show that Gwen wants to see, it's going to be hell for you guys the next couple days. Um, you can actually just hit this button, it kills all of your lights that are on this okay. switch here. The lights above your dinette, for example, or on the back of the wall, are on their own switch. But it'll kill the main ceiling lights all throughout the entire unit. Okay. okay? Um, and then, of course, you can do them individually off this panel here, too. Um, any questions? Nope. Okay. And the battery's here. You guys just throw it off. So you have four six volt batteries wired together. Um, two of them are going to run the unit, the other two are set up for the fridge. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's exactly what your batteries are set up for. So you have a total of four six volt marine deep cycle batteries. Okay.
your toilet, um, there's one in the back is a va uh, power flush toilet. So you have two buttons over here to actually flush the toilet. You have a water saver and a normal flush, or a flush for number one, a flush for number two. So all you're going to do is push the button to flush the toilet, and that's it. And then that's going to flush it down just like it does at home. Okay. Your resettable outlet is located right here in the corner. That's your master GFI. It's in the back bathroom. And that's just your master reset there. Again, because you use water back here, you have a water pump switch, your vent lid and your vent fan. Very nice. It's a fantastic fan. It does work fantastic. It's not just a smart play on the name. Um, they really do work very well at moving air in or out. Down in here, you have Carol's washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Splendid combination unit, just because it's a combination unit, just means you can't do as much as you could if it was stackable. All of your stuff is going to go in here, your fabric softener, your bleach, your detergent. Um, the only thing I'm not familiar with is if it requires special kind of detergent, so double check the manuals and see what it says to, um, for you on that there. All you're going to do is you're going to first of all turn the system on, put your stuff in, set your dry time, your wash temperature, and then behind the sticker that says washing machines winterize, it's got numbers here. Um, like number 11 is silk. So if I had a load of silk um, garments that I'm washing, I'm going to select number 11 over here, put my stuff in there, close the door, hit start, and then it'll lock the door and then proceed to where install, uh, do the washing and everything. You use a lot of water, so it's a good idea to have your gray water open while you're doing this and then dump that into the, the uh, or have an empty gray tank and then they'll almost fill it. So okay. they use a lot of water. That's the only thing I hear about these that people complain about. Not really complaining about, just make sure everyone knows. Right. Okay. And that's it for that there. Your shower is a real glass shower door, so be careful. Uh, make sure you, it's locked when you're traveling. It will rattle around a little bit. You don't want it to swing on slam and shatter because these pieces of glass are very expensive. So just make sure it's locked there. And then you do have up here above it, you have the skylight, which is kind of nice there. And you can actually block that off if you don't want the birds watching the shower getting jealous because they're showering in a puddle. So I can see. All right. All right. First, we lift the bed. Show you your coffee table is down there. No assembly required. Um, it's all set up. Just flip the legs up, stand it up, and then you got your coffee table for the living area. Okay. And that does not come with all of the models. Um, it does come with some of them, though. Okay. All right. Usually, just the ones with the L-shaped sofa. Now, who's got that side of the bed there? I do. You do. Alright, that means you got control of the ceiling fan. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what that white dial over there is. And then 2015 and up tip it started including dual USB charging ports on the side of the bed so you can charge devices, which is the way the power cords are going. So phones, tablets, whatever it may be, you can charge there too. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your thermostat over here, RV Comfort. Um, just choose what you want to do, okay? Because you guys only had one furnace outside. Heat's not going to exist back here for you, but they don't make a furnace that says therm or a thermostat that says cool only. So you're just going to leave this on auto, over to cool, and then. All right. Speaking of your electronics, my favorite compartment in here. Oh boy, here we go. All right, so you have your LG Blu-ray player down here. It's 3D, so it'll play the 3D Blu-rays. It'll play regular Blu-rays. Um, it'll play regular DVDs. Um, probably run the audio off CDs. Um, there usually is an FM transmitter built into it, so you can listen to it under the function key right there. Once you push the button on the device or off the remote, and you can bring that stuff up there. Disc will pop in there. You do have the USB connection here, so you, again, you can play things like your iPhone, your iPod, mm -hmm. whatever Music it may be. The mm -hmm. Music through there, again, if you brought it with you. And that will be controlled with the speakers up in the living area. Inside here, you have currently a Direct TV high def, uh, direct TV receiver. Um, with the existing satellite you have on here, if you want to use Direct TV, you can. You can only get standard definition, though. If you want high definition from DirecTV, you have to replace the satellite, which costs $2,300 for the dish, 
and three to four hours labor to actually swap it out. Um, otherwise, if you have Dish Network, just replace the box. You get high definition and standard definition. Direct TV broadcast are high def on a different bandwidth, which is why it's that set up that way. That's something that Direct TV does on their own, and that's how you get that to actually show up in here like that. Okay? So here you have your antenna control box itself here. All right? Push the up and down arrows. And you can actually hear the antenna rotating up there, and it's just adjusting the direction for signal strength. Your channel is all going to be set up automatically. There's nothing you can do for to actually control that there. Okay? So that's that guy there. Up here, you have your A, B selector switch. A is your roof mount satellite, B is your tripod or portable satellite dish. So if you're, you're parked under trees, your st uh, roof satellite is not giving any reception, kick it over to tripod and then set yours up outside. You can move it away from the motorhome and then bring in your satellite dish signal that way. And your in motion on off switch for the satellite is right there. And that's all it does. Turn it on, it tracks the satellite for you automatically. Now, we listen. And there it goes, trying to find the signal for you now. And that's currently set up with DirecTV. So right now it's trying to find a signal for DirecTV because that's the way the manufacturer presets it. Flip, uh, switching it to Dish Network if you wanted to, just take the cover off, put the dip switch on the satellite, put the cover back on, now it tracks Dish Network. Okay. Um, so you don't have to do really anything crazy. You're not jumping through the fire hoops. Dish Network's the one that would actually offer HD yeah. programming for that dish. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough. Yep, and Dish Network also offers a pay-as-you-go plan too. I do not know if DirecTV does or not, but Dish Network, if you already have service, it's like an extra 8 bucks a month. If you don't, I think it's like 40, $44 a month, um, and then you can only pay for it for 3 months out of the year if that's all you ever use it, right, which right. is nice. The other thing which is hard to see because the light is here is this green light that's on. That's your antenna booster. Um, you still got the button to turn that on and off, so when you turn that off, your antenna becomes cable. So if you're hooked into cable in the water compartment down there, um, you can bring that in, and that's how you actually get it to show up on the TVs. Any questions in this compartment here? Nope. Okay. The light shut off automatically in there? Yeah. Okay. I didn't yep. know if it was a switch that you had. It's a pressure switch. Oh, okay. <coughs> All right. Just like the other TVs, push in, and then it brings this up here, and then you can scroll through it. Press and hold. Ta-da! Down here on the floor, we have this little lovely sheet here for your 12 volt fuses. Okay, they're resettable. When they pop out, they kind of look like an eraser on a pencil. Um, and they're all labeled as what exactly is what. Okay, um, so that's actually very nice. Then you have your 12 or your 110 breakers down here. Okay, um, just like at home and on the other trailer. Then underneath it, you have your um, carbon monoxide slash propane leak detector, a two-in-one combination unit built in. So things that can actually cause that to go off. First item is low battery voltage because that's tied into your house batteries. If they get low, that'll go off alarming you, letting you know it's getting low. Um, that, and I'm sure the dimming lights wouldn't be a very big hint for that one either. But, um, <coughs> Scented cleaning chemicals, spray suntan lotion, hairspray can cause that to go off. So if they are used in here, be careful and make uh, that that can actually cause that to go off. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Really strong, harsh cleaning chemicals like bleach and ammonia. If you use them to clean in here, which you can, just be careful because they can damage that sensor. Aside from being hazardous to you. Right. And then any pets going with you guys? Probably at some point, yeah. Probably at some point. Okay. Um, well, just be aware, dog farts can set that off. Really? Really. <laughs> okay. Methane gas and propane gas are both natural okay, gases, that's which true. is why yeah. it registers. All kinds of fun things you can do with yeah. that there. Okay. First off, on this side of the cabinetry, you will find three pieces of paper on the back there. Those three pieces of paper have all the model numbers and serial numbers of your appliances inside here, making getting information or replacement parts for this thing a lot easier in the event. Um, your awning stops working, the motor's shot. Okay, we need the numbers off the tube. I can't get it out and the numbers are on the tube, so obviously there's a problem there. 
everything's right there for you. Let me go in my closet and get it off the spec sheet for you, no problem. Mm -hmm. So there's that there. Then, on this side, you have a fan slash splitter disable. Um, your HDMI stuff is run through here, so one complaint that Tiffin used to get was the cooling fan that's basically a computer fan is too loud and people are having trouble sleeping. So now there's an on-off switch for it. So if that does bother you, you can shut it off. But when you're using the TVs and the electronics in here, you got to have it on because it will get very hot in there and you can actually right. burn stuff out. Right. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's it for that there. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Light switch, so you can turn all the lights on and off from your bedroom. You have your bedroom lights, your hall lights, and then your slide controls right here. This particular slide is what's known as the Lippert Swintech slide design system. And long story short, when moving the slide, keep the button held the entire time the slide's moving. Do not stop halfway through. If you do, the two motors that work together that, to bring the slide in and out can become out of sync, the slide goes out cocked, and stuff can break. So when you're moving the slide, just keep the button held the entire time the slide moves. Okay. If you're bringing the slide in and let's say, oh, Bobby, you left your sock down there. Carol, you left a towel down there. Got to cover your both there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got it. Yep. Uh, if that's the case, of course, stop the slide, remove the object, continue bringing the slide room in, and then you can, uh, then it, that's 100% fine to do. It's an overtime thing that'll cause that to happen. If you do notice it going out cocked, run this line in and out a couple times, I believe it's three times, all the way in, all the way out, resyncs the motors. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's just the best rule to follow. Make sure it's clean and then push the button and keep it held in the entire time the slide moves. Okay? In here, you just have your typical foot flush toilet. Step on the pedal lightly, puts water in there. The rest of the way flushes it down. You have one more vent in here. Again, lights, water pump, because this is a water location where you're going to use water and stuff, so... That's all that's here. You got your Hero recliner chair. Very nice. Um, it's got the footrest in it, which is pretty cool. Um, nobody can sit there while you travel because it's not fastened to the floor. Um, it's just a safety no, thing there. there are seat belts in here. Yes. There are seat belts in there. Um, next over here, we have TV. So, uh, it has a built-in like default energy saver setting. You can shut that off and then the screen brightness shows back up. Um, that's a lot brighter. Um, but the important thing to point out with this TV is this is your smart TV. If you have internet connectability oh. hooked up to this TV, you can do things like Netflix, Hulu, Vudu, uh, movies and TV. You can Skype on it, um, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Um, this little thing that you see up here, that's your infrared sensor for the remote. Um, because I can access the Blu-ray player from here without having to go back there and, you know, okay, um, Bobby, is it saying the movie's playing now? No, you're in the scene selection. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can do all that from out here okay. with these little infrared remote eyes. Okay. Um, your fireplace. <laughs> Down over here, you have a dial to adjust the heat setting. A one switch that has a zero and one dash that turns the heat on and off. Okay, and then you have this next switch over there, which has two dashes, a zero and one dash. Zero, of course, is off. One dash is just on. Two dashes is a remote function. Um, if it's not on the two dash setting, remote does not work whatsoever. You can turn the heat on and off with the remote if the switch is on. Otherwise, you're just turning the display on. You have to have the display to get the heat to come out of there too. Any questions on that? Okay. What's the panel right above it? What is that? This? Yeah, is that like your... That's just a vent for, um, that's a dummy panel, really. You have your TV's actually plugged in either over here or over here, and the fireplace is on the opposite side. Okay. So that's all that is, really. Yep. All right. Ooh, that's nice. Recommended setting for the fridge is three. Express cool. You have an on-off switch for your ice maker. You also have the bar there. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Um, winterizing these things, what the tacks usually do is they make a batch with it hooked up to antifreeze. It takes a little bit longer to do, but that's the best way to guarantee that everything's winterized properly. Make it ice come out. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Right. Yeah. Yep. So you just let it run while it's hooked up to antifreeze, and then it winterizes the ice maker that way. Okay. Behind the the that. Now, is there a filter for that? No. Okay. And that's going to be used with the filtration system in the basement compartment. There. There's no separate additional filter. Mm -hmm. That's where the bird comes in. <laughs> oh, not for the ice maker. Oh, that's true, not the ice maker. Yeah, not the ice maker. Okay. Yeah. Um, in that access panel on the outside that you guys would normally have on like the, the travel trailers and stuff, you have one on here. Um, supposedly there's winterizing valves back there you can mess with too, but the best way to make sure you winterize it properly is to just make a batch while it's hooked up to antifreeze. So that's just the way the guys do it here. Okay. okay. Any questions? No. Okay. Alright, off the couch. That is over here. Okay. A little slap. Now when you go to take this out, there's a safety catch right there that you're going to hit. So you have to actually push this, uh, pull this back uh, towards the front of the unit actually. Okay. Have to take a look at that. I will. Okay. All right. Air mattress. Yep. Now your air pump itself is hooked up over here in the top corner. It zips. And the air pump, which which cap is that? Uh, it should be that one up there in the top corner. Yep, there it is. Okay, air pump's there. The way this is going to work is it's going to attach just like this protective cap here, okay? You twist it on, you lock it in place, and that actually activates the pump. There is no master, or there is no like on-off switch for it when it's full. Um, you actually have to take the pump off. It won't stop until you actually disconnect oh, okay. it. Okay, so there's no okay. yep. the air out. Sleep on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, be careful with this bar, it has resistance to it for a reason, okay, because it's helping to get some of that air out. Um, I did a walkthrough with the woman who was grabbing on here and yanking down. Eventually, it gets to a point where it drops down. So, we have a couch at home, like that, yeah. Yeah, I have done that. <laughs> and there are your seat belts right there. Oh, okay. Alright, your L-shaped sofa pulls out here, and then there's two handles. Recommend using both of them together because you have to get it to go far enough forward to drop in this little channel here. So if you're just pulling on one, it doesn't go up all the way and it falls back in. Alright. And that's all you gotta do. Alright. Nice and easy. Okay. All you need is just one to get it to go down. And then to close it back up, release the lever there, push it back in, or not. So, this thermostat gives you access to your furnace with your gas heat. Your electric heat is your heat strip in the front air AC. Um, they don't really work underneath about 40 degrees is the cutoff. And they're just meant to maintain the temperature, not change it. So they take the chill out of the air, okay? Um, and the way they usually wire these things is if the temperature does drop, they shut it off, or it shuts itself off, activates a furnace to bring the temperature back up, shuts the furnace off, resumes using the electric heat then. Um, so it's kind of wired that way, which is nice. Um, and then of course your AC and everything is all controlled up here too. Your driver's side uh, switch for the front is up here. This one's hydraulic, it lifts up um, when it's coming in and everything, and before we're done we'll uh, close it all up for you too, together. Your propane water heater switch is here. Your electric water heater switch is here. Choose whichever one you want. Just remember for the electric side, you gotta turn that extra switch on outside on the tank. That can be left on the entire time. Was that your question? Yeah, that was it. Awesome. <laughs> like I know you guys know. Yes, you do. Um, water heater fault. That's gonna light up, letting you know that the pilot was not able to light for some reason. Whether it's an air pocket in the system, spider made a nest in there, whatever the case may be, that's going to let you know that the pilot is not lit. 90% of the time, air pocket in the system. You can light your front, your cooktop, everything else in here will be able to light. Okay? 
Water pump switch, of course, because you use water here, so you have a water pump switch here. Another vent fan, vent lid. Just make sure this guy pops open. Alright. And of course, because at this moment in time, you guys do not have vent covers on there, make sure they are closed when you're traveling because you will lose the cover to wind. Alright. Of course, you have some more lights over here, and also this little orange amber light that's currently lit up. That's your monitor panel on this unit now. So. Um, this is actually going to tell you how full all of how your you tanks are and Good. your battery voltage. Um, so right now your battery voltage is currently at 12.8 um, and that's pretty much it. Just letting you know your battery voltage, your propane is full. This is the more honest gauge to go off of as far as judging your propane. And then of course your black, your gray, and your fresh shows you how full those tanks are in here too. And the only place to turn the back lighting on and off on these panels here is right over here. Um, which could be a distraction if you guys are driving at night in the dark seeing orange lights in the background um, so that might not be a bad idea there okay now holy remote batman what are all these here <laughs> okay well the direct tv one's self-explanatory so let me pop this guy in here um all of your tvs you have three tvs in the unit they're all lg so one remote works any one of the tvs okay so Here's your basic LG TV. This one's meant to be used inside or um, in the bedroom or outside that TV. But it will work the one in the living area. If you really want to get technical, this one should be with the living area because that's a smart TV. This is a smart TV remote. Okay. Other TV remote. Um, your LG Blu-ray player. Marked Blu-ray disc home theater. And that's how you're going to control that. The volume key on that is going to be for the controlling the speakers and everything in the ceiling. Okay. This guy right here, your HD View 360 Mini State Antenna, um, that is your omnidirectional antenna. So you just push left and right, and you can hear it rotating mm -hmm. up there. That's your antenna, and that's the disc that's on top of the roof. Okay. Okay, that's not the dish. That's just the that's antenna. That's just okay, the antenna. Cool. Yep. So the dome on the top is your right. uh, satellite right. dish. You have a remote for your backup camera. A useless remote, in my opinion, because you can only use it when you're sitting there driving, driving the, the unit. So instead of actually pushing a button, you can just move your elbow now if you want the option. <laughs> you got it. Um, and then of course your Dimplex remote, which is the fireplace, all it is is on and off. And then just it's just a display like we already discussed there. Then you have homework. All of your manuals and warranty information is going to be found in this big binder here. Your water filter for your basement compartment. We actually stock this filter in our store. It sells for about 15 bucks. They recommend you replace it every six months. Um, so just so you guys know there. Charcoal. Your cooktop here, all you guys to do is turn it over to light, get your sparker, and it ignites the cooktop for you. Oven's still going to be half to be lit manually. That'll never change no matter how much money you spend on the unit. What you get, if it's got an oven, it's got to be lit manually. Uh, but you guys are going to swap that out for a dishwasher. Right. So, that's fine. Microwave slash convection, sharp. Simply the best. It's very proud and likes to brag. Um, so there's that there. Microwave by default, and of course, take the metal out to use it like a microwave. Um, and the cardboard wouldn't be a bad idea, too. Um, but that's all of your parts and everything for your microwave. Like I said, microwave by default. So if I want to, want to warm up a cup of coffee for 30 seconds, I hit 30, then start, and it'll go through the microwave procedure. Um, stop clear. If I want to use it as a convection oven, I can go to preheat or I can go to convect and then I set my temperature based off of the numbers here. So 350 degrees. Then it's going to ask for cooking time. I enter that in and it'll take care of the rest on its own. It'll be a trial by fire thing if you guys haven't used one before. Um, takes a little adjustment there, but that's it. Okay. And then you do have your light, your fan, which does vent outside. That's it. Okay. Okay. 
stainless steel sink. You don't have to worry about pans melting the sink on you anymore, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And your sprayer is detachable. Your very expensive garbage can. My horrible jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's hard to try and find jokes in here. Your table, just grab and pull, and it'll extend the table out that far. So now you can put your extra chairs up for guests or you want to have the grandkids with you. Um, and then just push it back in and latches in place there. These lights are on their own switches, so that's it there. You got your MCD shades in here. All they're going to do is you're just going to pull them down, and then pull down and let go, and they go back up. So that you have that set up on both your night and your day shades. The use of them will help keep your RV nice and cool because um, they'll help block out some of the light which is what's going to actually heat the unit up. Right. That pretty much covers everything from the driver's seat to the back of the unit. Do you have any questions? Where is my computer table? It comes out of the, the wall. Your computer table that comes out of the wall. <laughs> I just demonstrate this. Your yes. computer workstation yes, okay. is right over here. So there's room for a keyboard. Um, set your monitor up there or laptop over there on that tray. And then you have room for your printer on a pull-out tray down in here as well. Okay. And that is where you will find your computer workstation. Computer workstation up in here, so if you wanted to read a book, maybe uh, play around on a laptop while somebody's driving, you can. Um, there is a little space for storage underneath here, too, when this goes in. Um, it does reach this point, and it doesn't really go back anymore. It's to, just got to give a little extra oomph, and then it does go back. Okay? Uh, that's it for that. Oh, sitting down, taking a break. Spin in the chair around. So how did it just auto? Did you push a button? Yeah, I okay. push the special button. And disconnect the seatbelt at the top. You really gotta find a sweet spot to do this. Sometimes you're moving the chair forward and backwards, especially with that one. It's possible. You just gotta find the right positioning for it. Okay. And of course, Carol, I'm assuming, is gonna have this and take full advantage it's of it mine. while Bobby's driving. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can see that happening. Uh -huh. right oh there. yes, he knows it. Yep. I'll be telling the dogs to go lay down. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, that is over here on this side as well as your seat adjustment here. And then the lever to release it to rotate and spin and swivel is okay. over here on this okay. side. That's located on the right side on both chairs. And then the driver's side seat adjustment is over here on the right side as well. Control for the passenger fan and the passenger right. map light. Um, that's actually meant to help defrost the windshield. They can be turned around to blow air on you as well. But the main purpose for these fans is to help keep that windshield clear. A very big windshield to defrost, so they just help out with that. Okay. Um, we'll turn the key in the on position and see Greg Lewis walking around behind your motorhome. Okay. Um, you have your standard dash controls and whatnot, which will be sufficient for you guys, okay? If you're traveling with the kids or grandkids, anybody with you, you're going to have to run like the roof mount AC or the propane furnace to keep the back of the unit nice and cool or warm depending on the season. Um, the dash stuff will not be sufficient for whoever's riding with you, okay? Um, and that can be done. Your nightshade, which will give you privacy and everything, the ones on the side, are all manual. Your solar shade, your sun visor while you travel, same thing. Um, this one you can only see through so that's why they say use that as your sun visor. Your driver fan, and that's it there. Of course reset, setup, and info, that's all going to be like the information here. Browsing, browsing through your mileage, your tripometer, 292 miles till empty, engine hours 37.3, Tripometers 90, 936.6. Um, so that's just all that stuff there. Um, cruise controls on the steering wheel. Your wipers are on the turn signal. You have your map light switch over here on this side. The auxiliary start. Hold this down, and you can start the engine off the house batteries. Say you guys are traveling from here to Florida, a nice long vacation, Grand Canyon, wherever it may be. 
you pull in somewhere, you're bushed. You were working since 6 o'clock in the morning, you left at 2, it's 1 a.m. now, you were exhausted. You forgot to turn your headlights off. Easy mistake. Um, your engine battery died overnight. Don't worry, you're not stranded. You can start off the house batteries. And of course your generator start stops, which is up here, is on the inside of the unit. Push and hold down the stop button, the little light shows up, letting you know that the generator is primed and ready to go. Now you can actually push and hold the start button to fire up the generator. Okay? Mm -hmm. This red switch here, that's the mirror heat. Yeah, and then you have your mirror adjust. Your top mirrors are heated, your bottom ones are not. Okay? Any questions on that? Yep. Of course you got the power window here. Very nice. Alright, now the fun stuff. Okay, um, your backup camera system, AV, automatically takes you to this blue screen that says a, um, AV on an auxiliary video input. There's basically two RCA cables or RGA cables hanging underneath the dash. They are the white and the yellow um, that you would plug something into another video device that you can get to show up on this monitor here. How you would use it, what you'd use it for, I'm not entirely sure, but you got the option if you want it. Okay? The mode button here is going to browse through the cameras manually. Okay, while we're on the backup camera, let's activate the, uh, the microphone and now you can hear all the directions someone's giving you back there while you're backing this thing up. I like how you look at her. <laughs> we her when phones. she's back there saying, your other left, you idiot, you're going to hit the tree. <laughs> My mother was right. I should have listened to her. Um, you can hear all that. The best part is she can't hear you. So you can have some fun with that if you'd like. <laughs> but I can. Um, hold the, or make sure you shut that off because when you're driving, it will pick up the wind if the monitor is on and it's just going to be really annoying. Okay? Um, of course, hit the power R button and it shuts it off, and then everything's on a delay and will show up in standby mode too. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, so if I don't want say it's night driving, I just don't want that on. Yep. You can, can shut, shut it, it off. off. But if I do change lanes, it's still gonna come on. Yeah, it'll still come on, letting you know it's safe to travel over here because you can, you know, only cover right. your blind okay. spot and everything. And if you're driving and you want to manually do it, um, so that way you're not faking people out with a blinker just to see, um, you hit the mode button here, and there's your left camera, there's your right camera. And again, the AV screen you'll run across with that as well. And then back or to your rear. Or you remote. Or you could use a remote. <laughs> yeah. It's another option. It might not be bad, because you know, if you had a remote and you knew where the button was in your hand, you don't actually have to look at a little button. And... Mm -hmm. Which could make sense, yeah. Your radio. Has, this switch has to be on to use the radio. It does not matter if the key is on or off. Okay? Now okay. you can take the key out and the radio is still booting up there. Okay. Your XM activation code is on the window behind you there. Um, give them a call and then you can actually get a Series XM on this device now. Okay? <coughs> You hit the menu button down here or up here. So this is Bluetooth. Too, though, yep. So I can link my phone to it and just listen to Pandora. Correct. Which mm -hmm. shows up right there. Um, to do that, you go into setup, Bluetooth, um, HD radio is your AM FM stereo. And then your speakers come out right here in the front only. Is there any way to send that back there? Or no? no, that's where you're the blue to blue. It has a radio anyway, right? Yeah. There are no speakers there. They're here. Yep. Your navigation, you gotta set this up. Of course, we're always gonna agree. Um, right now, you're in tr uh, truck. We're gonna switch mode. No, we're in RV mode. So save, agree. Now you got to set up a vehicle profile. All this information that you need is, can be found in the, sale, the unit brochure, so we'll make sure we get one of those and then we'll go through it. That's it. Where to? Enter in the address wherever you got to go. 
Okay, so your leveling panel here. Okay, HWH computerized leveling control here. The orange light here indicates where the unit is off level. So right now it's saying that it is off level in the front of the RV. So when we drop the jacks, it's going to level in the front first. Okay? I'm just going to manually right now. The red lights indicate the jacks that are down, and the beeping you hear, along with the red light on and the dash there, tells you that your jacks are in fact down, and the key is in the on position. That's when you'll hear that beeping. Because there's nothing to stop me, aside from my superhero power of common sense, from putting this thing in drive, stepping on the gas pedal, and destroying a $10,000 jack system. Okay? Now, you're going to pay attention to the words here on these pictures, not the directions that the arrows are going, because if you were to fold these two ends down in a three-dimensional figure, they would be going in the correct direction as far as extending and retracting the jacks. Okay? So even though that's pointing up, that's actually extending the jacks. Because like I said, you fold it down, and right. that's actually pointing down now. Okay. Travel mode is lit up green. That means it's actually safe to travel. Okay? Not in park slash brake. You gotta be in park or have your park and brake set. Otherwise, you push a button on here, and the red light will trigger saying, by the way, you gotta have this set first. If you try and level this unit, and it's not possible based on the ground that it's you know, level lying on, the condition of the ground being too soft, or the angling of the, uh, in the incline of the ground you're leveling on, excess slope will trigger saying, I cannot level this unit as it sits. So you have to bring the jacks back up and start again, maybe by putting boards underneath it, or repositioning the motor home. Auto level and auto store and cancel. Auto level, push the button, it's a momentary switch, it'll level the unit out. Auto store brings your jacks up, and of course cancel is going to stop it from doing whatever it's doing. But, auto level, here we go. Don't break the floor. Do it, do it, do it. Push and hold it for a second, let go. And now the jacks are going to start going down. We're going to hear some creaking and cracking, I guarantee those boards are working. <laughs> Okay, um, all four of your jack lights are down. That's what those red lights indicate there. All right. You see no orange lights. You can level with the, the slides out. You can level with the slides in. It's recommended you actually level with the slides in, though. Pull into the campground, level the unit. In your case, I'd recommend hooking everything up first because your water compartment is actually underneath the end of the big slide there. Um, and then, uh, then open the slides out. It'd just be easier to do for you guys there. Right. Um, you know that it's also done because the auto level is not flashing blue at you anymore, okay? When you're ready to bring the jacks up, you hit auto store, the jacks come up. So let's do that. Now all the jacks are coming up. And that is still going to flash blue at you for approximately two minutes after it's done to make sure that it's given enough time for it to uh, bring the, the jacks all the way up.